Ahoy, this is Denka. I've got Canon M6 Mark II vlogging kit and I've got also iPhone 13 Pro vlogging kit right here. And I'm gonna combine some of the parts with this newly released gimbal Xeon Crane M3, which is marketed for vlogging. I have a lot of questions. It's very small and very light. So how is the balancing? How is the performance? Because it is small, how is it even stable? I would like to see the app. I would like to see everything about it. And I would like to also thank photography and filmmaking store pergear.com for providing this gimbal for a test and review. What I've got here is very basic version, which is a standard kit. There are also combo kit and pro kits available. In my kit, I've got the gimbal, a little tripod, fill light filters, carrying case, type C to multi Sony shutter release cable, Type-C to micro camera charging cable and Type-C to Type-C camera charging cable. That's it. The gimbal is really small. The weight is 700 grams without a tripod. You will get eight hours of runtime. There is no maximum payload specified, so it is all about balancing. If you can balance it, <laughs> you can use it. The first impression, I gotta say, okay, the design is absolutely beautiful. The colors are just sharp. There are details everywhere. It looks really modern. If you look at the motors, they even have the name of the motors written there. Tilt axis motor here, roll axis motor, and pan axis motor right here. Buttons look cool. The 1.22 inch OLED touchscreen is a bonus. We'll see what it offers. Canon goes first, I've got here my a vlogging setup and this is Canon M6 Mark II. I've got on it step up ring and then variable anti filter by moment. I've got small rig cage and I have here the wireless microphone, which is Comica Boom XD Pro. Canon M6 Mark II is on the compatibility list, such as Canon M50 and all that but it's not on the list where you could connect it via the cable and control everything through the gimbal. Now, what I saw written below was this statement that Transmount Crane M3 Bluetooth control unit is required to control other cameras. The compatibility list for those cameras to be updated. So that's something only Zuyan can answer. So I believe that this is gonna be added down the road. This Canon logging setup I would use on my old Joby Gorilla part. Now, balancing with Zuyun Crane M3 was quite simple. All the motors have locks, so you unlock one motor, balance it, then you move another one, and balance it, then you move to the next one. Once you are done, turn it on. The interface is very simple. You've got your gimbal modes, next to it is balance. When you hit that, it will show you if it is well balanced or you need to make some changes. Info is below and settings. Under settings, you can do auto calibration, which will take away any mistake with balancing, any little jitters and stuff, so it's not gonna be vibrating. Under parameter settings, you can customize stuff like motor, torque, smoothness, follow speed, joystick speed, and dead band. Day two, if you saw the previous shots that were beautifully done in the evening with the snow, I am back here again. Uh, this time no snow, <laughs> quite cool though. It's overcast because very simply, I, didn't under, I did underestimate uh, the cold weather last time and the microphone didn't have any more battery left. So I ended up with no sound. So I'm here back again to correct all this. I told you, no snow whatsoever. No snow. It's just quiet. Everybody is in the house, everybody is inside, even though it's not a very cold there. It's not definitely a windy day, so it'd be a good time to be outdoors, play with the kids, get them a little bit tired. That's what I'm trying to do there over there. <laughs> oh, come on! <laughs> What's a go? <laughs> Why are you walking in the kitchen? two years old to nine years old. What are you doing here then? Again. You are way older than that too. <laughs> Stabilization test is up. I'm walking pretty hard with Canon M6 Mark II and this is regular hard walk. So let me do the ninja walk right now. I'm gonna try to be as stable as possible. And 
this is very this is the look you're gonna get if you're gonna be helping the gimbal to stabilize the footage further and let me do some run as i was filming with this gimbal and this camera i did not see any limitations in the movement there was zero vibrations i did not have any problems with it whatsoever what i can control on this gimbal are modes and i can do them by tapping on a screen or i can also do that by pressing the m button the modes which are offered on this gimbal are pen follow mode lock mode follow pov go which is like a sports mode vortex and portrait portrait mode i have not really seen on other gimbals what it does when i press it it turned into this position so now all i have to do is just record this way and i will be able to record shorts or reels for social media and then when i want to get out of it i just simply press the m button and it will go back to the um position before so again portrait this is the movement it's gonna do and now i'm ready to do that this is absolutely fantastic because on all the other gimbals if you want to use a portrait mode you have to disassemble you have to take the camera away and then mount it in a portrait mode so this has been solved with literally one click the movements are very smooth and really nice there are no strange movements as it is changing all these modes and it's not getting stuck or anything like that so that is quite impressive the little trigger here allows you to recenter the gimbal if you press it two times as standard if you press and hold you're gonna get to go or sports mode that means it's gonna react very fast if you press three times it will turn 180 degrees to a selfie mode so now i'm ready to walk around and record myself now i'm a fairly tall person with long arms and it is tiny gimbal it is small i'm using 15 to 45 millimeters lens and i still had to extend my arm quite far to make sure i'm very well framed so that's something to keep in mind you really need to extend to really see yourself with that type of a lens on this gimbal the axis range of movement is quite large tilt is 309 degrees roll is 333 and pen is full 360 degrees so this is all i can do with this camera on this gimbal at this time now it's december 2021 one thing i want to show you is actually as i'm removing this camera is just quick release plate so there's a safety button i push it to the side press the red button and i simply just slide the camera out now the quick release plate is covering the whole bottom of the camera so on this camera if you want to remove the battery you still have to unscrew the plate to get to the battery the app which is used with this gimbal is zy play this is an app which is for the cameras in my case i can control the movements of the camera roll motor is here and joystick controls are here i can change gimbal modes if you have a camera which is already on the compatibility list you can do panorama time lapse and trajectory photography let's move on to the smartphone all i want from that big vlogging setup from the big rig it's just the iphone 13 pro small rig cage filter adapter filter all the other lenses i have and the microphone if you donate a microphone the balancing is very easy i had no issues and no vibrations if you are talking about sound and microphones the big microphone is not going to work as you will have trouble balancing it for me i like to use good quality wireless microphone for my other cameras and this comica works well for me i can pass it through the motors for iphones you have to use an audio adapter steven gosan suggested this right angle adapter which will be awesome for the moment thin case but it's not suitable for the smaller cage I also have this small cheap microphone for iPhone but that one is also not suitable for small rig cage you simply cannot connect it one of the best solutions would be to use smart mic plus but you would have to get the double pack which is quite expensive in order to use it with any app on your smartphone if you only buy the smart mic plus it will only work with their own App, so you cannot use it with your native camera app or filmic pro and so on i'll link it below for those interested but again it's not cheap 
you always need to search for the gear to make the setup. Very rarely it comes to the point that you will just get that item and expect that all the setup you have at home will work with it. It just doesn't work that way. Usually when you get one thing, then you have to check what will work that thing and you have to pretty much build it from the scratch. So we finally got some little snow and there's a few things I want to show you in this area. So I'm gonna cross the road here. I'm filming right now in Filmic Pro and I'm using the double take. So I'm recording what's ahead of me and I'm also recording myself at the same time. And I'm gonna show you this little thing which is being installed all over here in downtown, well downtown, close to the beach area in Whitby. And that would be <laughs> this little antenna. I'm not sure if you guys know what it is all about. This is a little antenna which is leading a bus throughout this area all the way around the beach. The bus does not have a driver and they were testing it. Obviously last week the bus crashed with the operator on it. So I guess it's not going to be used for a while now. Let's see the stabilization. Right now I'm filming on an iPhone 12 Pro in regular camera app, a native camera app, and I'm just having a standard lens. So this would be the stabilization you get, and it's just a hard work right now. I'm not walking softly. So let me try a very soft walk and see what kind of stabilization they're gonna get. So I'm very deep in my knees right now. I'm trying to be as stable as possible, help the gimbal to get very smooth footage. And I'm gonna try to do a run now, even though I'm on the snow, it's not that easy. Hopefully I'm not gonna wipe up. So this is the stabilization you're gonna get if you're gonna be running. What's really good about this gimbal is very positive is the fact that you can load anything on it when it comes to smartphones. So you have a very big, large smartphone with heavy lenses and microphones and all that, you're good to go. You can load it. There is no maximum payload limit. With the other smartphone gimbals, you have maximum payload. So if you cannot find any gimbal for your smartphone, this would be one of the choices. And then you choose and any app you want to film in, your preferred app. The negative, the downside is that this gimbal does not come with a smartphone app. So you're gonna be missing out on a lot of features like motion lapses, panorama or dolly zoom. For that reason, Mota Mini P would be a better choice if you are looking for a gimbal which has an app where you can do all that. That gimbal hover is a little bit more difficult to balance is not as simple as this one. It does not have the automatic calibration. It doesn't have the portrait mode. So you have to kind of think what features you are looking for. Last thing I didn't show you yet is the light. There is a wheel on the side when you just press and hold, it will turn on. And actually the light is a very strong, as you can see right now, I'm dimming it right now, but I'm making it strong. And you can also change the color temperature. Now it's blue and now it's very warm. The color temperature goes from 2600 Kelvin to 5400. Some of you might wonder if I tried to stabilize the Sony A7S III on this gimbal. Well, it's very highly unrealistic that I would be ever vlogging with the Sony A7S III because I'm not that strong and I have a hard time even holding it like this for a long period of time. If I would be vlogging, I would choose the Canon camera or the smartphone. If I would be filming with Sony A7S III and I really wanted to film, I would choose way bigger gimbal, much heavier, which is gonna give me amazingly stable footage right from the get-go. I simply know that this one cannot give me the same stabilization like a large gimbal, and I would have to bring the footage on a computer, use the Catalyst software to stabilize it further. It's just extra steps for me. It's time consuming. I like to get the stability straight up from the camera when I'm filming, but if you are interested to see how the Sony A7S III performs on this gimbal, look up Brendan Lee. He created an amazing video about that where he also explains the stabilization and use of Catalyst software. To be quite honest, at first, I didn't want to like that gimbal. I didn't, I, I, 
I didn't want to like it. First of all, it's been all over the internet. Um, the marketing was huge for this one and I was very skeptical. I was very skeptical. The design is beautiful, all that. And then when I started vlogging with it, I made I actually started liking it quite a lot. Especially I like this the auto calibration and I like the portrait mode. Now I would love to see it fully working with Canon M50 or Canon M6 Mark II. So I'm gonna follow up on that and see how I can connect it together. Um, I'm gonna try to ask them questions about that if they can help me out. With the smartphone, it's great, but the missing app is just bummer, you know, that you cannot do the panorama and all the other things. I wish it had an app for smartphones. That can be a big deal breaker for a lot of people. Either way, all the gear I was showing in today's video, all the little things, the little wires are listed below the video in the video description. So if that's something you want to check out, you can find it all there. Otherwise, give it a thumbs up if you found this video informative and subscribe to future videos. If you have any questions, comments, just want to say hi or ahoy, you know what to do, just leave it below. And I'll see you in the next video. Ciao, ahoy.